Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the first online lecture uh, in this spring 22 semester. Uh, it, we, we are in chapter 6. It is unfortunate that because of the rapidly increasing COVID micron virus situation, the university and the government together had to take this decision that at least two weeks will be online. Uh, so we will manage it. I mean, uh, for these two weeks, I will record these lectures, which uh, I was supposed to do in the class. And uh, then towards the end of the lecture and so on, uh, there will be some time where you can ask me direct questions also. So one part is that you attend these online lectures, these video lectures, these recordings. I will upload it to your course Moodle. Uh, you go through them carefully. And when you have some questions, you ask me. Uh, we had already covered uh, Young's Modulus in the class, but uh, we will again start from Young's Modulus just to give the topic a continuity. So now we will start the mechanical properties from here. We will start the mechanical properties from here. The first mechanical property and you know that you, you had earlier Hooke's law in your earlier mechanics. This is not Hooke's law. Hooke's law was force and deformation. You had F is directly proportional to X. So F is equal to KX where K was the uh, spring constant or whatever. Remember the stiffness of the material. But now instead of force you have stress and instead of delta L you have a strain. So it is a stress a strain version of Hooke's law. So calling it Hooke's law is not right. Hooke's law was F is equal to KX. Now the law is sigma is equal to E epsilon. This is in the straight line region. If there is a straight line, there is a slope of the line. There is a slope of the line, right? In the vertical axis, remember there is a stress. In the horizontal axis, there is a strain. So if you at any point, if you take a triangle, right? Lower point, upper point, make a triangle. Then the vertical side of the triangle is the stress and the horizontal side is the strain. So if you divide a stress by strain, you get the slope of that line. That slope has the symbol E and it is called the modulus of elasticity or the elastic modulus or the Young's modulus named after the scientist who discovered it, right? So modulus of elasticity, elastic modulus or Young's modulus, all the three are just the slope of the straight line region when we are doing tensile test of a metal and the straight line region for metal means elastic region. So therefore modulus of elasticity. As an example, general steels, all steel, low strength to high strength, this modulus is about 207 giga Pascal. Remember 10 raised to 9, very high value. For aluminum and aluminum alloys, it is about 76 giga Pascals. It is about 76 gigapascals. Of course, I am not asking you to memorize these values. Once you do a lot of engineering in the real field, then some of these values are permanently there in your mind because every day, if you are dealing with aluminum and steel, aluminum and steel, then some values will be permanently there. But for you, in the exams and quizzes and so on, either the value will be given or a table will be given. So you just need to understand. You just need to understand. If you were doing exams and quizzes in the class, in the class, then I will give you uh, a, a few papers apart from your quiz or exam where there are tables of properties and where there are all the equations in the course. So you don't even have to memorize or remember, right? So that is always my concern. People ask me, oh, doctor, do we have to memorize? I get really upset. I can't say angry, but I get really upset because memorization by rote uh, 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 memorization after two days it goes away but if you understand it very well and you solve one problem two problem three problem based on this equation then this equation is permanently with you but my main concern throughout the course is that no please don't try to memorize and reproduce something you are to become engineers you must understand so that when there is a problem in the real field you know you, you forget the equation, no matter. I mean, you are in the field, in, in your office, you have access to any book, anything. But if you don't understand, then the book is there, but it is useless. So understanding, okay. 
so we will give you values we will give you equations of course once it is online when you are doing it in your home then uh, the class notes and so on are already available with you so there is not even a need to give you a formula sheet okay so modulus of elasticity is the first material property that we can derive from the stress strain diagram okay so this is we are just again explaining to you that the original piece was this the length was changed we plotted the stress against a strain we take any two points any two points then the stress here and the strain here this ratio is the young's modulus or slope of the material here this is outside from your book or if you are having callister book it is from there i like these type of charts they are brilliant if you have this page when you are in the industry working outside in the field then it would be great again you have here on the uh, vertical axis you have the values of e in gigapascals in gigapascals right and this column is for metals and alloys this is for gray ceramics this is for polymers and this is for composites the four basic material types for engineering and then tungsten molybdenum steel titanium platinum copper zinc silver aluminum magnesium in ceramics graphite concrete glass in polymers polyester pet ppe hdpe right so this is a brilliant table on one page you have the young's modulus of all the major engineering materials and you also know that the young's modulus of ceramics is perhaps the highest of metals is only slightly below but it is still very high the young's modulus of polymers and plastics is very low composites are things that we design we make them by mixtures so from very low to pretty high we can moderately do it so if this type of a chart is available with us then we don't have to look at a lot of tables for metals separately for ceramics separately and so on the second material property that we want to do from the graph is the yield strength some of you already know the name because of your earlier courses and so on right it is the border line between the elastic and the plastic region that is what is written you can read it right the straight line region where it ends that point is the yield point because after that the curve will start or you can say where the elastic region finishes and the plastic region starts now why is it called yield i always have this in every course that if the words are there they have a meaning so forget about material science what do you think is the meaning of the word yield in normal english you have done a full year a full year of uh, uh, foundation and so on with english and so forth yes one of you answered that if there is a agricultural field then how much you produce is called the yield so you are right that is one meaning of yield there is a cotton field there is a wheat field there is a rice field how much you produce is called the yield that is one what is the other meaning of yield in normal english yes you see if i put some pressure on you there is a political pressure if you resist it you do not yield but if you cannot resist and you agree to the pressure you yield so to give in to the pressure is called yield so here you see until elastic modulus until the end of the elastic region the material was resisting as soon as you remove the load there is no deformation but once this point is reached the material has yielded it has gone through a permanent deformation now even if you remove the load it will not go to zero deformation so the meaning of yielding that you applied external pressure and now the material has permanently changed so the meaning of yield is correct so here in the graph here in the graph if they are showing you that if there is if there is a very standard end of the straight line region a standard end of the straight line region then we find that point but sometimes it is very difficult it is a smooth curve so we cannot find where this point is so this point is otherwise the yield point so what do you do on the strain side you see 0.2% strain 0.2% which is 0.002 so you mark this point you make a line parallel to this make a line parallel to this and wherever it cuts this there you find the yield strength 
and you call, you call it 0.2% offset yield strength. So either the yield strength is very clear at the end of the straight line region or if the curve is very smooth then you do a 0.2% offset yield strength and this is the end of the elastic region and the beginning of the plastic region. So one more material property. So yield strength again as I showed you the previous uh, chart this chart is also from Callister. Callister is a very good book in this regard. So we have yield strength here the unit is megapascal. The unit is megapascal metals and alloys, ceramics, polymers, composites. Okay. This is the yield strength, yield strength. Once again, if I ask you now, you have gone through the previous lecture, what is the yield strength? If you have to say one sentence, what will you say? What is the yield strength? Those of you who are saying that it is the point where the elastic deformation ends and where the plastic deformation begins, then you are right. It is that point. It is the end of the elastic region. It is the beginning of the plastic region. Okay. So it means that yielding means that it has started to deform permanently. Right. Now if you, I don't know if you notice here, uh, I mean uh, one thing which is very clear is that the yield strength of metals and alloys is pretty high and of polymers, plastics is pretty low. Some metals like pure tin or some aluminum alloys are low. They are as low as good strength polymers, but all the other metals are very high. But what is this? What is this? Hard to measure. Don't read further. Hard to measure. Why is it hard to measure for ceramics? Can you, without trying to re read anything here, can you tell me why are no values of yield strength given for ceramics? Just think, don't read. You see, if you have already read the next line, then it doesn't matter, right? You are not using your brain. You are not taxing it. You, you should be very clear that, no, 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 I will not read. I will try to answer from my own mind. So for ceramics, why is it hard to get the value of yield strength? Why are no yield strength values reported for ceramics? Anybody? What is the most important property of ceramics? They are very hard and very strong and they are brittle. Do you understand? Two different things. One is that they are very hard and very strong. They are much harder and stronger compared to many normal metals. This is one side. The other side is that they are brittle. And I tried to explain to you earlier. It is not that if something is very hard, it will be brittle or not. Something can be very small hardness and still brittle. And something can be very high hardness and still brittle. Brittle simply means what? Yes, you are right. Brittle simply means that there will not be plastic deformation. There will not be large plastic deformation. It will not be very ductile. Right? So that is the problem. If it is a, a strong ceramic material, then the strength is high. The line on the stress strain diagram, the line goes up and up and up and up. But suddenly it finishes in a straight line. It does not go into the large deformation. So if it does not go into plastic deformation, there is no yield point. The end of the elastic region is there, but you cannot call it a yield point.